in that previous slide, I mentioned that we don't have to worry about Markovnikov or anti-Markovnikov when we're adding Cl2 or Br2 across a double bond, but there uh, is something special to look out for if you're using an alkene that is a ring compound, like this cyclopentene here. Because as it says here, if you add two chlorines or two bromines across this double bond, you specifically get the trans isomer. And remember from our discussions in chapter 3, when you have ring compounds, uh, such as dichlorocyclopentane here, uh, there is a cis and a trans isomer. Well, we get trans when we do reactions on alkenes. And as it says here, it's because the mechanism for this reaction involves one of the chlorines adding to temporarily make a three-membered ring that's kind of attached onto the five-membered ring. And these dashes imply that that chlorine is uh, coming from the back side and is forming uh, th this little ring adjacent to the one that, that we already had. That's called a chloronium ion. It's positive, which is why that IUM is on the end. I don't normally see chlorine with positive charges, but that, that's the case here. And so the second chlorine, which would have a negative charge, because if one's positive, the other's going to have to be negative, since overall everything's neutral. Uh, that means this chloride, it's a nucleophile, will have to come from the front side of this ring. And no matter which carbon it forms a bond to, it's going to kick the other chlorine to the carbon adjacent to it. But because these chlorines are going to be coming in from opposite sides of the ring, that's why we get trans. And so generally, if you're doing a reaction of an alkene and um, it involves Cl2 or Br2, uh, you should indicate that specifically you're getting a trans 1,2 isomer uh, to distinguish from the possibility of getting cis. Uh, there are other ways of making the cis isomer, but uh, you wouldn't make them in the reaction we're talking about here. Uh, your book shows this on page 252, uh, showing ethylene as the example, but it shows the complete mechanism for adding, in this case, Br2 across the double bond. Again, we get a bromonium ion instead of a chloronium ion. Uh, we're not operating on a ring right here, so um, we would predict the correct product uh, even without knowing all the details of the mechanism. But it is showing that the bromines don't add at the same time, even though they both end up on the, ring, on the, uh, on the, on the molecule we start with. Um, but it also shows why the bromines would end up on different carbons as well. And again, if this were a ring compound we were starting with, this would lead us to a trans isomer. Finally, one more reaction. Uh, it's kind of a cross between making an alcohol and making a halogen compound. And so it's called a halohydrin. Um, those are compounds, as it says, that have alcohol groups as well as a halogen group. If we attempt to add Cl2 across, say, ethene here, but we do it in the presence of a good amount of water, then we end up with a cross between the hydration reactions and the, and the halogen reactions. And so we can kind of uh, make a compound that's two different things at once. It's an alcohol and it's an alkyl halide. If we do this on a, cycle, a cyclic compound, again, we get a trans isomer. And uh, it's still the case that uh, the halogen, the bromine, would add first, make that bromonium ion, and then the OH group uh, comes in but it would come in on the opposite side, so you do get the trans isomer here. And your book, uh, again, shows this same reaction uh, in this figure from page 253. So we get trans and we get the halogen and the OH group adjacent to one another.